Good morning and welcome to our November 2017 Blocks Total CMS webinar for page designers. Today, John Winters, product architect for Blocks Total CMS, will dive into the system's latest client improvements and updates. I'm Cherry Wolf, marketing specialist. The presentation will take about half an hour and a Q&A will follow. At any point, you can type a question into the chat box, but we'll hold off on answering them until the end. With that, John, it's all yours. Thank you, Sherry. Hopefully you can see my screen and hopefully I just advanced it. There we go. And so this, this is our agenda for today. We're gonna to talk briefly about the Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, we'll look then at the, the heart of the uh, webinar, which is changes to the client, some big ticket things that, uh, that you may have missed. Then we'll talk briefly about uh, preparing for the Appliance 218 update. And then we'll talk about what's on the client roadmap. So that's the plan. Starting with uh, Creative Cloud, Adobe released um, Creative Cloud version 2018 just a couple weeks ago. We have been using it uh, since the first day. Very impressed. Um, it is indeed a little faster than uh, the previous versions. We're using it in today's webinar. And a big thing for us is that the uh, final couple, of ver couple versions of the uh, 2015 version were buggy. And there were issues with both of the 2017 versions. We had recommended uh, the original 2017 for a while um, because it was less prone to crash than the second 2017. But now if you're on Creative Cloud and you can update, I would recommend updating to 2018. Uh, in addition, uh, if you're using legacy in design, uh, we really recommend that you get updated to the Creative Cloud versions. Um, it is faster. It does have some more features uh, that we take advantage of. In addition, um, Adobe released uh, CS6 over seven years ago. You can no longer buy it without a Creative Cloud license. They no longer provide any support for Creative, for creative Suite um, 5 and 5.5. And uh, we'll stop doing bug fixes starting in uh, January of 2019. So that's over a year in, of um, uh, notice there. Uh, changes to the client. This is what we're what we're here for today. Big ticket items that have changed in the Blocks Total CMS client for InDesign. First thing is that we're going to talk about is using the syndication tool in the Asset Manager. Uh, the reason you need to start doing this is that with the Appliance Update 2018, that is uh, two from where you should be right now. Um, we will be uh, removing the ability to run the AP Web Feed agent off of the appliance. Uh, if you uh, installed your, your system more than about three years ago, uh, you would have been using uh, the AP Web Feed agent, and that's going away. So you have two choices. One is to switch to the syndication tool. That's the preferred method. It's free. It's very quick. Uh, otherwise, you'll need to get your own dedicated PC to run the agent and drop the, the output from that agent into the appliances hot folder. Uh, we recommend the syndication tool. Um, configuration is, is really very easy. Uh, these are the steps that will be there on the um, outline, the handouts that we'll give you, but I'll just run through it here real quick. Um, I'm in the syndication tool. Here is the application settings. You'd have to have permission to do this. I would click Channel New, choose Associated Press. I key in uh, whatever name I want to call it. AP is good. You have already an AP uh, username. You put that in as well as your AP password. Pick a workflow. A lot of times sites have a wire workflow and click save. And literally within about 20 seconds later, you'll start having um, AP content. It is super simple. There is no reason not to do that today. <coughs> so there's the steps. Uh, in the asset manager, I'm gonna show how uh, that behaves. I don't have a page open, but that's okay. I'm gonna go up to the Asset Manager. There's a syndication tab. I am using um, Adobe InDesign Creative Cloud 2018. So there's a, a couple different things here. The tabs have these blue lines, but otherwise it's still the same process. Uh, we have searching capability. Uh, this indicates that this asset has already been imported. If I, um, let's say I go to another page of asset, those are all ones that have been imported again. Let's say I click on this, 
and I get to see a preview, which is the typical um, uh, syndication to a preview that we've had for a couple years. What you may notice now, though, is that if there is a lead child image, uh, we're now showing that child image down there. And there is a preference that I'm going to jump ahead to talk about here. Uh, we've got in the slide moving on uh, these two preferences that we're going to talk about. Hidden over here under syndication. Wait for it to come forward. And I'm going to click both of these so we can talk about them. I'm going to click apply. That apply button is new. And I'm going to go back to syndication and search again. I think I had been on the second page there. Maybe I'm already on the second page. And it was this one, maybe? I don't know if that's the asset or not. Anyway, yeah, that's close. So a um, couple things happened. One, I clicked on it. Notice how the imported word uh, showed up this time. That's because with that function turned on, the import, which was really the slow part of working with the syndication tool, that's happened now. So that when you're ready to go put that onto a page, it's already done. In addition, rather than the limited uh, preview that we had before, we now can read the entire story the same way that it would appear um, if you had imported it with the AP Web the agent. So this kind of takes the uh, remaining issues out of uh, contention uh, as far as people not wanting to uh, update to the syndication tool because it's, it's different. Um, but it's just as good. The other thing that's great is that these images here with the AP syndicate with the syndication tool, those are the high res image. Now I'm only showing a one inch wide piece here, but it is the high res image. So you do not have to go back to um, the browser interface and download the images you want to use. If you're using the syndication tool, they're already downloaded the high-res image. So this is a big, big save uh, of time. The other thing that's that's different, it's not showing right now because I haven't put this onto a page, but that second preference I turned on will show an icon in here if you have uh, dropped the asset on the page. This allows you to know that somebody else has picked up something because there's lots of pieces here that have been imported, but which ones have been used on the page? Well, if I had used some, they would show an icon. So I'm going to click cancel out of here. We'll go back to our presentation and we will move on to the next slide. There we go. So another new feature of the client is we now support um, the article designer tools. Uh, this is sometimes called the storytelling tools. And these are options in uh, the browser interface that allows us to control the way that inline items look in the browser. There's a whole webinar just on that. Um, and I'm not going to go through and demonstrate that process because uh, it's, it's really very easy. And like I said, there's a, there's a webinar that you can watch the recording of to learn how to do that. The important thing for you all to know is, is, is that um, as soon as you have uh, appliance uh, OS 2.17.0, where well, that's the current one, uh, you will have these features. You also then need to either get client 51940-6. Uh, um, that is the one that has gone through complete QA, or if you are on 522.03, uh, that's kind of the one that I'm working on. I'm actually a couple versions past that. Those both completely support the um, article designer tools. And you don't have to do anything. Uh, so long as your site has uh, trimming enabled, uh, all of the article designer stuff just works. There's no rule set changes. You just need to have current code. Um, one thing that does change with the regard to the current code, if you had looked at the uh, way those inline assets had been trimmed in Adobe InDesign, they're a little different. They now contain a, a little bracketed number out here. And this makes sure that we get the, the proper formatting. This tells the, the client something. Next thing we're going to talk about is a, is a change that not everybody was aware of, is we have uh, three kinds of jumps. Several versions ago, we introduced something called a document jump. Um, and that's mainly what we're talking about now, document jumps. There are the three kinds there. Most people are using uh, dynamic jumps. That's still the, the recommended way. But the advantage of the document jump is that you can share a page. And so I'm going to work on uh, sharing that page here in a little bit. I'm going to actually uh, create a uh, document that we'll talk about, and then I will share those pages. Um, neat thing about the document jump um, is that it, it pretty much just works. It's a, it's a neat little kind of process, and we've got quite a few sites that are working with it. 
And I, yeah, go on through here. Let me come back to these because I have some slides out of order here. Or I've missed some slides completely. One of the two. I think I missed some slides completely. Um, we wanted to talk about um, the page content types, and somehow I have missed those slides. So I'm going to jump to Adobe InDesign and do that part of demo. Uh, page content types um, are a function that we've had for some time. They just do more now than they used to. I'm going to go create a new publication. I'm currently set up to use um, vision data and let's grab a template out here. Yeah, that looks good. And I will uh, create a document. So this dialog that pops up is listing the kind of virtual page names. So rather than understanding A7, we really got the obituaries page. Now, uh, several of our ad systems support sending this stuff to um, the Blockfiddle CMS client. Uh, if yours doesn't, if you can find a way to, to get it for me, we will integrate this for your ad system. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then you'll see what the result of, of that is. Oops, I didn't click OK. So this is our standard ad statuses. You can see then that there are things listed here as pages, and these are coming from the page content types. The page content types come from the ad system. People who lay out the ads know that, for example, that uh, your A3 page is your local news. A4 might be your uh, national news. A5 might be your uh, opinion page, for example. And so here is the unsplit document. And these page design snippets that are there are there because the ad system told us what kind of page this was. And so any page headers like a local, this might just have a local header up here or the obituaries header, those just pop on the page. Uh, here looks like an open page. There's no markup here. Uh, this is a little piece of text that says that's the comic page. There's our weather page. And it's all integrated with the ads as well. Uh, I'm going to split this document up. This takes uh, not too awful long. And then I'm going to go open up the uh, page A1. With LCN for tomorrow, page A1. That's just a warning that I had just opened that page and Page Tracker wanted to update it. Okay, so again, the stuff that's on this page came from the advertising system telling us what this page was for. Um, and this is uh, the neat part about um, the page content types automatically applying the snippets. Uh, the only thing you have to have is the page content type set up in the, in the browser interface. That's under the naming convention. And then you have to have snippets matching those names. Um, and it's just kind of automatic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and do our little jump. So I'm going to grab a story. I'm going to grab it off of the syndication tool. That's how all this was supposed to come together. And uh, that's a decent length story. And I'm going to click import. It already has, again, these are high res images. And it's already brought all the high res images in. I just want the article. And um, I think I'm going to click maintain so it doesn't go any, any deeper. And then I'll have the opportunity to pick some pictures. And I think I am just going to click and, oops, get this first picture. And so the story is overset. There's a weird thing going on here with that deck head. It's still kind of big, blah, blah, blah. But I want to go in and jump this. I don't think there's actually very much jump to, to do, but I'm going to jump it anyway. And we're going to use that document jump function. So that would be uh, blocks little CMS jumps, document jump shortcut, import. And I believe our open page was page eight. I think that was our open page for jump. It certainly looks like because there's no um, snippets on that page. 
And then from this point, the document jump page is, is just like a dynamic jump, except that multiple people can go out there and work on it. So I'm going to put my tail of my jump right here, keyword. And I'm not going to give it a head. It's just going to pop back up and ask for the head. I had head defined, but I don't want to give it a head. It asked for the head this time. And so there is the tail of the jump. And of course, I can move that around. Now, so far, this really doesn't look like anything other than a normal jump. Uh, what's different is that this page really is um, a shared page. That little icon up here indicates that it's a document jump page. The orange flag at the bottom indicates the document jump page. The DJP on here indicates it's a document jump page. And this page can be worked on by somebody else. So I'm going to close this document. And I'm going to go open up that page A8 as a separate document. Other people can jump to it as well. I won't go into uh, that part of uh, the process, but I will open it up as a separate document. Documents open from LCN 17A8. There's the ads that were on it. I didn't get those ads before because I had not opened up this page before. Here's my jump section. And you should see that the import from the syndication tool is really quite fast on something like that. So there is um, this page. Notice how the content that is over here is really, it's not even touchable. And that's because this is a document jump page. So the other person can work on the jump while I work on this part. Good enough. So now let's move back to our presentation. Doing pretty good on time. Okay. So a couple of things you, you cannot do with document jumps. If, if you are not sharing the page with another user, just use dynamic jumps with combined with. Uh, also, you, you really can't consistently mix the document jumps and the dynamic jumps. There are ways to get it to work. Um, we do things to try and prevent you from doing that because if you manipulate the pages uh, in different orders, uh, bad things happen. And that's what I'm talking about here about uh, don't rearrange the pages. Okay, clone and move is the next thing we're talking about. Clone and move has also been out for a while. Not everybody understands the, the concept of it. And so we're going to go in and do a clone and move. I'm going to go back to my A1 page. And I'm going to also create another page out here. Documents, new from templates. Actually, I've got one if it'll let me. There we go. So here is one document. Here is another. I actually want to copy that front just because that's the one I have content on. So we will documents open nearby. Grab that front page. And here's the actual front of it. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to copy this entire thing. Now, it may not make a whole lot of sense to copy an A front, but I may want to copy maybe this part of it. And so that's some selected items. So I'm going to I'm going to copy that with the assets and put it over onto the other page. So this is a great use for clone and move. It has its own little menu choice up here. Um, if I can find it, there we go. Clone and move. It wants to know which document is the source. That's this active one. Which one am I going to put it onto? I'm going to put it onto that BTC one. That's this open document. And then it wants to know how I'm going to actually move stuff. Well, I want to do all of the selected items is what I want to actually move. And there's nothing really special I'm going to do here with the assets on the um, source. But on the destination, I have the ability to go in, for example, and change the slugs to convert dates if you use slugs, change the pub codes if you use those. I can add text to the slug. Um, there's all kinds of capabilities that you can do here. You can put stuff in the print notes. You can set flags. You can change the workflow. So I'm going to change the workflow. I'm going to put it in news, and I'm going to put it in in progress. No, I'll put it in, in uh, ready for first read. So again, our options, we're going to take all the selected items, okay? And as we put them over there, we're going to 
uh, clone them to the destination page and this source is going to stay right here but the clone or the copy of the selected things is going to go on to the destination page so i'll go ahead and i'll click ok little progress bar you may not be able to see that and as soon as it's done we'll jump over to that btc page Advantage here is that if you're trying to reuse content for a separate edition, maybe you have a, a particular publication center that produces for multiple towns, they want to share a national news page, a clone and move is made for that. Uh, it's also useful for just simply producing a budget because you can take and move these items from on the budget or you can move them themselves. So if you had a, a advanced page, you can go out there, that was kind of slow, 49 seconds. You can go out and, and take an advanced page that maybe you built on, on page X5 and you can go move it to page B3 if that's where it really goes. So let's go take a look at our BCT page. There it is, remember I only selected those certain things. If I look at this asset here, this is going to actually be a copy of that asset. So I'll look at details and asset details. And don't know that, that you could tell this easily because I didn't add anything to the um, uh, slug, but here is that news and ready for first read that the first asset had, or the, that, that the copy had, as opposed to this one here, which I don't even know if it had any workflow or if it was in the wire workflow. Let's go check. Details, asset manager. It was in a wire uh, workflow, so that's how it had copied over from the syndication. So it is actually a copy. It's a really cool tool, clone and move. One of the other things that's nice about clone and move is that if you do similar stuff, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay here, I'll cancel on the next one, is it has the ability to set up configurations so that you could, for example, uh, clone stuff, but set do not publish. Some sites use do not publish to prevent stuff from going online a second time. Um, all kinds of neat things you can do with changing the workflows and changing the flags. Um, so neat stuff, very useful tool. Um, it's it's made for sites that really do lots of pages, especially pages that they're sharing amongst uh, other publications or zones or editions. That's Clone and Move. There's several slides on there. I've gone through and explained that whole process. It is, however, a Creative Cloud feature only. You have to have Creative Cloud to use Clone and Move. Here's the page content types that we did. I guess I had this out of order. Um, so again, there's logical page names. Um, the advertising system knows these things. We mark the pages all over the place for that. That includes marking in the live e-edition uh, what the, the page types are. Um, it, right now, it's supported by these ad systems, just using create edition from edition file. There's also some page content uh, type menu options uh, in this part of the menu. And uh, one of the other advantages here is it allows you to do uh, these templated page productions. That uh, I had nine of those uh, 10 pages in that section I created all work set up. Works whether using create pages or split document. Uh, here's how to configure it. This will be in the notes. Next thing we're gonna talk about is um, output changes. There were a lot of output changes starting in client 5.17. Just, it was, that's, what that particular version of the client was about, output changes. One of the ones that I'm the most pleased about is a function called chain. Chain's process, is, most important fact here is that it's fast. It replaces the use of next method with a chain that outputs a series of PDFs into a variety of places. It's very common for sites to want to send a PDF of the final page to output, of course, but they may also want to send it to an archive. They may use a third party uh, e-edition they need a copy of. They may want another copy that's going to, uh, say, the museum. And Chain allows uh, the output of a single PDF and you rename it and send it to as many different places as you need. Uh, which is far faster than next method, which basically has to recreate a PDF every time. So if you're using chain, your output's typically gonna get done in half the time. 
uh, we'll we'll test this out here in a little bit. I'll grab a page. The other thing is, is, is chain is far less likely to crash. We've had complaints of sites saying they crash when they output. Well, yeah, crashing in output isn't that uncommon. You're doing the very heavy lifting in InDesign. Uh, it has to grab all those links. You're calling in a whole bunch of extra code in InDesign to produce the PDF. Uh, but this is far less likely to crash because it's making a single PDF instead of a bunch of them. Also, sometimes sites will complain that they have their pre-press systems grab pages before they're done. Uh, that's about impossible with Chain because of the way that it works. Uh, some additional notes here on it. Uh, it works only as a function of page tracker, so you're always getting the last PDF going to a page tracker. Um, all the chain links produce uh, PDFs. If you needed to use an EPS or some other kind of file, then you can mix chain and next method. That's no problem. So some other things that happen with output in that 5.17, uh, we have sites that include non-printing notes and they want to include those on the proofs. There's now a function that you can add to the output preference to get those non-printing notes to print up. We have a really cool function that will actually make a backup of your InDesign document that's useful at the proof stage. There is one that's not a new one, but some people don't know about it. If you want to make sure that the ads are good prior to output, then we can check ad statuses with that command in that output. Uh, as part of check-in assets, um, you can actually set flags on asset, a single flag during the check-in process. That's a new feature here. Um, we've had both an ability to alert users when output was done as well as close the document. As long as the document never worked very well, it does now. Uh, so that may be something you may want to uh, turn back on. If you've output all the pages uh, since the time that you have uh, launched uh, InDesign and opened up a particular document, then the document will self-close. Uh, and that means check everything in and all that. Something that's coming out in Appliance 218, I love this one. It's called Force Final Process. Uh, we have been having uh, people ask for something like this since the beginning of Blocks Total CMS. Basically, as an alternative to check an asset, it allows all the assets that are not checked out to have, have their workflow status moved to the final process of the workflow. So some sites have wanted things to, for example, move to done. Uh, check in assets works, but it's slow. Force final process works, and it's fast. And um, I have been setting that up in output preferences for the past several months, even though it doesn't come on yet. We also have the ability to export uh, NITF for um, archives and other pur purposes. You can trigger that via output via this NITF true, or also if you're using a site-based export, uh, there's a site-based export true. If you know what those do, then you may want this. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, this doesn't apply to you. Also, since the beginning, we've had sites that wanted to use pre-flighting uh, of their pages prior to output. This is also now possible. You have to have Creative Cloud for it to turn on. Uh, but if you do, then you add the, the name of the profile you want to test with, um, and it will then do a pre-flight prior to output. Some sites also want to do a visual inspection of the PDF. And uh, we have changed the way that works. If you want, for example, the final PDF to uh, allow you to see it, then you can uh, turn that particular option on. And then another neat feature, if you are uh, wanting to make sure that all of your assets have reached a print-ready status before you output the page, then there is the output command to uh, turn on that check. And it will warn the printer, or well, not the printer, the person printing, the person building the page, the page designer, that they are trying to print a page where not all the assets have reached print ready. Here's our output preferences that we showed, redirect uh, preferences, or redirect output to desktop. That was what was getting in the way for me. I didn't have that turned on. Uh, also, if you have, uh, if you're in development mode and you do an update of your output preferences, you get a series of warnings about anything that's, that's not quite as it should be. As part of um, the, let's see, I think this was uh, client uh, 5.18, we allow you now to actually receive your client updates with the appliance update. Appliance 2.17 has uh, on it client 5.18, and this means that you can update the appliance, which is a very simple process, and update your um, 
InDesign and InCopy clients all at the same time. Uh, to do that, you just need to have your shortcut that InDesign and InCopy use point to that location. The VIP is your appliance IP address, the, the virtual one of the pair. And then it's a hard-coded path to TCMS underscore InDesign underscore client. And then there is uh, what looks like a folder called Active Version. And that's what you make the shortcut to. And then as your appliances update, you'll get client updates. So those are the big features that we have added in the recent clients. They really date from uh, about 5.13 all the way up to 5.22, all things that have been changed in the client that we wanted you to be aware of. Also need to be aware of the impending um, uh, appliance update. Uh, current is appliance update 2.17. That has the storytelling tools. The next one is 2.18. 2.18 gets us an auto save. We call it auto recovery in the browser interface. That also gets us some neat things like icons in the browser interface. So you know when an article has been placed, you know when there's an in-copy assignment out there. Uh, it is a major update. We are really looking forward to 2.18. The other thing that 2.18 does for us is it gets the appliance a little faster because we're no longer gonna be processing all the AP web feeds on it. Instead, you'll need to switch to the um, syndication tool. And another part of this is that we drop HTTP communication. So one of the things that sites need to do if you uh, port your appliance through the firewall, if you have ability to access your block total CMS system outside the building without using VPN, you are probably uh, using an HTTP port. You need to switch to HTTPS. Otherwise, that will stop when you get to Appliance 218. Also, if you are using uh, Mac OS workstations and they are older, um, older than uh, OS X 10.6, um, you probably will need to get to at least OS X 10.6 or the client may not run once you get to Appliance 218. That is because of the uh, HTTPS support. Um, as a minimum for the client, we would like you to see five nine like you to be on five nineteen dot forty dot six. That would be the best choice. That'll probably be included on the appliance uh, two to eighteen, so that makes that easy. Um, also, um, you need to make sure if you look in one of your translate logs, or if you want to send one, you can uh, file a ticket uh, at support.tamnews.com and include a log. These are the things I'm looking for in the log to make sure that you're communicating with HTTPS now. Uh, if this, those three parts of a line that says REST parser, if those three parts there are not those parts, uh, then we need to help you get uh, converted to HTTPS. Very simple process for us to help you. And then of course, use the syndication tool that we talked about before. That's very important. You need to get that switched soon. You can do that today. It's very quick. So let's talk about what's on the roadmap. This would be roadmap for things in uh, the client that should get released sometime in 2018. If you're using Adobe InCopy, you should see at uh, some point in time during the year these kinds of changes happen. We're going to support cross-platform, so you could work in uh, maybe doing the design of the pages in Mac OS and the InCopy work in Windows, for example. Uh, we're going to return the ability to edit copy in a snippet. Uh, we're going to be able to start uh, basic versions of assets and in-copy. Uh, we're going to be able to speed up remote users of in-copy by only using the assigned frames. And we're also going to include some photo options uh, that will be a little different. I won't go into that right now, though. Um, changing some things in the Asset Manager, we're going to be able to get access to pages in the Asset Manager. Uh, main reason we're doing this is because we have those logical page names by uh, page content types. And so if you don't necessarily know that you're working on the opinion page or you know you're working on the opinion page, you just don't know where it is, you'd be able to open up by opening the opinion page as opposed to having to know what page it's on. You also are going to have at some point in the future pages that can be assigned to people. So you can find things that are assigned to you, or you can search for things that are in certain workflows, or you can search for things by what's the soonest in the deadline, because pages uh, very shortly are going to have deadlines when they're due by. 
Uh, and so if you choose to use that feature, it's certainly an optional feature, uh, then you may want to go and find the pages that are running late. Also, there's going to be notes on pages. Um, that actually exists now. It's just people aren't using them yet. But you'll be able to read those notes in the uh, Asset Manager in your pages. We're also going to work on distributed page production where the page files as an option can be stored on the CMS. They can be downloaded at a local workstation and then um, you can upload them back for other users to get a hold of. So this is distributed page production. That's going to happen sometime in 2018. We're also doing lots of bug fixes. Uh, don't assume that we know that there's uh, a problem with the software. Uh, different sites do use the system differently than what we expect. And so there may be something that you would like to see fixed. Um, maybe it's just that you don't know how something's really supposed to work and you have a question. So again, please file a, a customer support ticket at support.townnews.com. Uh, I, I love them, they're great. We're gonna open this back up for uh, questions. Sherry, if you wanna. All right, John, we've got a, a few of them. As a reminder, you can type those into the questions box and we'll be able to answer them. Um, first question. If there's an AP image sent to us through syndication, is there a CMYK 300 DPI version that can be used? Right now I have a group that is downloading them and converting them. Right, so um, the issue through syndication is, is whether or not that's truly an AP image that's available that way. Uh, we only download the RGB versions because these are the same versions that we would post online and we don't post uh, CMYK images online. So I'm gonna say that the answer is, is no. Uh, we do have some really neat functions for uh, exporting images off the pages to have them be toned, and we have a fair number of sites use a variety of different automatic toning systems. You have to have snippets named a specific way for the page content types. Yes, they have to be named a certain way. Let me jump over here and we will look at uh, settings, InDesign, page creation settings. I don't have a very big list here, uh, but the name that advertising uses for the page content type needs to match these names here under type, okay? I just have the description set the same, but it needs to match under type. And then your snippets need to also be named that same way. And then the final part of that, I can't show you, it's listed on the, the slides. Um, then for your publication, inside your page design snippet folder, you would have a folder matching the pub code. So in my InDesign, I'm using a pub code here. I guess we did this on LCN. And um, the LCN pages are inside the, LC, the snippet folder. There's an LCN folder, and inside of those are the snippets with those names for this publication. And the reason it's set up that way is that then you can have a standard set of page content names. Uh, for example, the sports front, but the sports front might look completely different for different publications. So those snippets uh, might have the same name, but they'd be different snippets in different publication folders. Do, do those names need to be all lowercase and have no spaces? They do need to be all lowercase. Uh, the spaces is, is not a requirement. I just happen to have mine that way because that's the way they came out of the ad system that I was using. For document jump, does that auto combine the pages? They are only, um, okay, let's answer the question as it was asked. The answer is yes. Um, so you can see when this is the A1, A8, this particular page here is the document jump page. There are some sites that call these things ghosts because when you're looking at them, so here's the ads and here's that other story I put on that other page. They are kind of combined, but they're not really combined because on here, which is the receiving page, this is what received the jump, uh, it's a standalone page. So if you were to look out in the folder where the pages are, you would not see the um, alias or shortcut there for that page eight because this page, 
is a document jump page. It's it's not the real page. So it behaves like they're combined, but they're not. With document jumps, can two people have them open at the same time? And what if the size of the original jump size changes? So it'll update uh, just with a save. So um, again, um, there was there's really kind of kind of two questions there. This is the document jump page, and I, I have it uh, visible via the A1 page. Let's assume that A3 also jumped to that same A8 document jump page. Yes, both the A1 user and the A3 user can do that. Only one user in the whole system can be on the real A8, if this is my jump page. Uh, but you can have as many people as you want jumping to this page. Now, in terms of size, it's changing. So if I move this and I save my page, when I get back to this other document, notice that the kind of untouchable version of that has already updated. If I were to take this and move it up and let's assume that I want it to occupy that much space. Maybe I'll grab an image of here or something along those lines. Um, again, if I save the document, by the time the, that the save is done, then the user back over here on the other page will then see that that has been moved and the space is now available. So it's quite dynamic. Um, it's, it's really a neat function. The, the key thing about it is, don't do it the way I did it, where I am also the person working on on that jump page. There's no benefit to doing that. It's really for when somebody else is using this. Or sports has this notion that they that they have to have, for example, a baseball page. And so they might jump off of the front of the sports section onto the baseball page. That's an ideal situation for document jumps, because you have somebody building the baseball page, and then they're going to receive off the front the jump of it. That makes great sense. But if it's just simply a page and you've got some space open to it, if you're building that same page, just combine them. But if somebody else is building, that's where document jumps come into hand, into play. And you may have already answered this, but I just want to make sure this is clear. In document jump, can you only edit the part of the page that is live on the open page? Opening A8, you can yes. ed not edit the jump. Correct. So again, in this A1 document, I can edit the jump here and I can do all kinds of things, uh, whatever I wanted to do to this, oops, that, to this particular part of the page. I can't touch this stuff. Can't touch the ads. Can't touch this. Likewise, on the jump page, I can do whatever I want with my story that's here. Okay, I'm going to go move this into two and maybe I want to get rid of that. Oops. Get rid of that completely. Um, but I can't touch the jump. Correct. Okay. You're only, you only can touch the stuff that you're working with. So there's there many ways to stay connected. Um, you can find documentation at help.blockcms.com. You can call our support number or go to our support website. There's a great partner community, community.townnews.com, where people share ideas, strategies, um, ask how you're doing things, and get feedback. The, you can check the status of our servers and service at townnews.status.io. You can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, or go to our website to sign up for a number of newsletters. With and that's all I have, John. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone who Thank attended. Thank you all. And we'll see you soon.